everyone, this is part two of the what really happens when you get no contact with a narcissist. And in the first part, video link up above, we looked at the impact on the narcissist and how they may behave. Today we're going to look at the impact upon you and some changes that you might notice. So keep watching. Okay, going no contact, it's not easy because partly you're addicted to it, so it, you have to go through that grieving process, you have to flush them out of your system essentially, but we know with drug and alcohol that actually going cold turkey is the best way to do that. So going no contact where possible would always be advised, we know that when you've got children that's really hard, so low contact as opposed to no contact. But it, another reason that it's so important is because it needs to get the message through to the narcissist that you are not their supply anymore. You're not playing their games anymore. They can't do that to you anymore. They can't treat you in that way. They're going to get nothing from you. And that initially, as we discussed, will infuriate them, but eventually they will move on. I'm not saying they will, they will forget and they won't always be a pain in the backside, especially when you have children, but they will... They will move on, they will find a new supply. They have to, it's a physical need within them to have that supply. And when you tell them you are not being that supply anymore, they will have to find someone else. So that takes the pressure off you a little bit. Not ideal for the new supply, but that's not your responsibility. So what happens to you? Well, like I say, the first thing is, you probably feel quite shit about it, to be honest, because you've been so used to talking to them, you've been so used to the drama, and even though we know drama isn't good, it has this high and low effect, the same as drugs, and that is really addictive. Our body becomes conditioned to want that, to chase that, so normal life, quiet, can seem a bit boring initially. We do crave that up and down. Sounds crazy, but it's just a physiological response to it. So be prepared for that. Be prepared for the fact that some of those days it's going to send you crazy. You're going to want to reach out. You're going to want to contact them. You're going to want to start something so that you can have that high again. But remember that this is a drug you're coming off. And what advice would you give someone that was coming off heroin? You wouldn't say, well, just have a little bit. You'd say you've got to stay away from it. And that's where you are. And you have to, you have to do your best to stay away. Alternatively, you might feel fantastic. You might feel like, oh my God, I've done it. I've done it. I've told him like, that's it. It's absolutely done and feel empowered. Feel like you've taken control back. That's what we want you to feel. We want you to feel like that all the time. Because that's a pretty amazing feeling. What you'll probably find is that you fluctuate between the two particularly in those early first few days, weeks, months, you will fluctuate between missing them and wanting to reach out and craving them to feeling like, no, I've got this, I'm doing great, carry on. Normal, absolutely normal of the um, addiction cycle. That That's why relapse occurs because we go in that, we go in that cycle. Once you pass that and you're still doing no contact, like I said, you're... Eventually you'll get to the point where you don't crave them anymore, you've, cooked, you've flushed them out of your system and you feel quite good, you feel, you feel good that you're managing it and that you're low or no contact with them. But they're going to keep trying, they will keep coming back and when you have kids that's really hard. So going no contact, you could find yourself easily getting drawn back in because they're very, very clever. They know exactly what to say. They've been pressing your buttons for such a long time, they know what to say. What I always used to find is that they would say, enough lies within their text, their email, even face to face, that your natural human response to an obvious lie is to call them out and say, well, hang on a minute, you must have misunderstood, you must have got that wrong. Clearly, you've made a mistake there because it's so obvious that that's lie. But that's a ploy. It's a 
ploy to draw you back in because yeah it is natural if someone was to, if someone was to turn around to you and say oh look how nice the sky looks isn't it really green today you look and go is that green you colour blind it's blue clearly it's blue with a few white clouds but they deliberately do that because they know that that will be your natural response to it so again it's hard enough made the mistake myself, I got drawn in innocently thinking they must have made a mistake. But as soon as they draw you back in, it is that black hole, that rabbit hole where you go chasing down, chasing your own tail because you, it just becomes word salad nonsense before long and you find that you're back in it and then you kick yourself because you think, what did I do that for? But don't understand that that is part of recovery from these sorts of things and then congratulate yourself on spotting it. Doesn't matter if it's a day later, a week later, however long it is, congratulate yourself on the fact you did eventually spot it and move forward again. Vow to get better. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to get better. And eventually you will notice that your life in general just gets better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. Because they are toxic. They are vampires. They will draw everything from you. They will destroy it. They will distort it. And once you're free of them, or as free as you can be, that relief and that feeling of yourself coming back. I found that one of the hardest things of coming out of that toxicity was I'd forgotten who I was. I got so lost in, in the toxic mess that I did. I forgot what made me laugh. I forgot what I enjoyed doing. And so I had to relearn, I had to get to know myself all over again. It's been one of the best experiences of my life. And you will get there, you'll get to that point where you're thankful actually. And it sounds bizarre, but I am, I'm grateful for what I went through in that situation. Because I learned a lot about love, a lot. I learned what true love is, I learned what true love isn't. I learned that love is a word that's banded around and used and what we're not to say, what they really mean is, I use you, I read a great thing the other day on Pinterest or Instagram where it said, replace every love with use and you pretty much get where the narcissist is coming from. I can take that forward, I can take that forward and I develop that relationship back with myself and I would love to help you to do the same. If you haven't already, do sign up for my free email course, it's just a five day course but it's really to help you understand where you're at right now and how to move you forward, how to start living that life. I'll post the links on the screen but I'll also post it in the, in the comments below as well, not in the comments, in the description below. If you haven't already had a chance, please do click subscribe. It really does help with viewing figures and therefore getting the message out there because this is such a difficult time and people need that validation that people understand and I want to provide that for people. So do like, comment and share as well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.